Hi, and welcome to week two of our study, The Answers to Your Deepest Longings, 40 Days Through the Bible. <laughs> Let's go ahead and congratulate you guys on making it through yes, week one. Yes, one. yes. Nice work. yes, Kendra and I are here again as your host, as your guides, and so we will be with you for the remainder That's of the right. study, and it's been such an honor to be with you this far. And today we have with us Wendy Blight, Yay. our OBS Biblical so Content <laughs> Specialist. And so I just want to take this moment to say OBS and First Five, we all love Wendy Blight. That's so the truth. You have um, skin in the game, in both, yeah. in both departments, too. yes. And so we're so glad to have you here you. this week. That's Thank right. You. And I'm very excited to see what we have in store this week. And each week, as you know, there's a different longing that we're gonna study together. And this week, we're gonna study the longing for freedom. Now, you may be sitting on the other side of the screen and on your couch wondering, I don't know how longing for freedom really applies to me. You may live in a free country and may, may be able to do whatever you want and you might not think you're in captivity, but we're talking about having freedom from sin because Christ overcame the power on the cross. Yes, that's right, Kendra. And so while we're studying our longing for freedom this week, we, we will encounter words like slavery, enslavement, captivity, and bondage. And so we know these words may generate some strong emotions due to the difficult conversation happening across the world, maybe with your family, your friends, your neighbors, on these very same topics. And so for the purpose of this week, we will study these words in their historical context through the lens of scripture. And so more specifically, through the story of Moses and how God used him to help free the Israelites after 400 years of enslavement in Egypt. And so we will experience both their harsh suffering and oppression, but also their miraculous rescue and freedom. And so freedom that once again allowed them to worship their God and our God. And so as we move through the study, it's important to clarify this truth. The Bible's inclusion of slavery does not equal the Bible's approval and or endorsement of slavery. And so it's our hope through this week that we get a full picture of the freedom that awaits us because like Kendra said of what Christ did on the cross. So good, yeah. Hannah. Yeah. All right, so before we di dive into the longing for freedom, I must ask Wendy, being part of the content team, what was your favorite thing about working on this study? Study days. Yeah, really? The, so what are study yeah. days? So the study days are the days that our whole team gets gathered together, um, the writers, and um, it was amazing. And it was just a gift to sit in the room with these gifted people and study God's Word, mm -hmm. share what we learned, edit each other's teachings, which could sometimes get a little hard. Yeah, um, and humble. And yeah. humble. <laughs> yeah. Not me, never. Oh, right, never. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned so, so much. And I feel like I just tightened friendships, yeah. and that was just a gift. Yeah, so. that's so neat. I always loved hearing about y'all study days. Mm -hmm. It seemed like there's a lot of richness that I came miss out them. of it. I miss them. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll do another one sometime soon, yes. huh? Just yeah, for fun? Yeah. Just yeah. for fun. Yeah, just, just for, for fun. fun. <laughs> I love that. All right, Wendy, well, we would love to hear from you. How does this week's longing for freedom apply to us today, and what does it mean to have freedom in Christ? Oh, big question. I know, right. yeah. I know. Don't have a, yeah. I Good thing there's no over, timer. Right. I won't, yeah, I won't go. <laughs> As I prepared, though, for this week's teaching, it seemed the deeper I dove into God's Word, the more I learned about what it means to move from being under the power of sin and death to being under the power and control of our new nature in mm. Christ. And that's the good news. Yes. John 8, 36 tells us that if the Son sets us free, we will be free indeed. But what are we set free from, mm, right? Question. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about four things from which Jesus sets us free, though there are many, many more. Right. First, he sets us free from the captivity and control of sin. Life forever changed when Satan engaged Eve in a conversation that enticed her into sin. And that sin took Adam and Eve's hearts captive and controlled them from that day forward. And then it didn't end with Adam and Eve, right? right. It's been downloaded into every mm. generation of people since. And without some greater intervening power, that sin and the impulses that come with it 
continues to hold God's children captive and rule over our hearts and minds. But thankfully, Jesus brought that greater intervening power. Jesus' death, resurrection, and most importantly, his ascension into heaven set us free from the control of sin. And if that wasn't enough, Jesus sent his Holy Mm, Spirit to live within the hearts of his children. So though we still feel that pull towards sin, scripture tells us that the one, the Holy Spirit, who lives in us is that intervening greater power Mm. who sets us free from captivity and enables us to overcome those sinful impulses. And that's from 1 John 4, 4. Second, Jesus sets us free from the penalty of sin. Mm -hmm. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus. The bad news? Without Jesus, God's people are subject to the death penalty, Mm -hmm. eternal death and separation from God, imposed upon Adam and Eve in the earthly garden. The good news With Jesus, our new identity as children of God negates that death penalty and guarantees us new life in Christ with the promise of spending eternity in the perfectly restored Garden of Eden. Third, Jesus sets us free from shame. Amen. It's when we live in captivity and under the penalty of sin that Satan, who is the enemy of our souls, relentlessly attacks us through emotions like shame and guilt and condemnation. But in Christ Jesus, Our new identity ensures we know we are holy and righteous children of God, set free from shame, guilt, and condemnation. Finally, Jesus sets us free to, this is my favorite, truly (laughs) live, serve, and bear fruit for him. Paul writes in Ephesians 2.10, we are Christ's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. Sin arrested life in the garden as Adam and Eve knew it. Sin, guilt, and shame permeated and infected perfection, Mm. separating us from God, right? And then we live as slaves to that sin, separated from God, burdened with guilt and shame. And when we do that, we can never do the good works of God, right? Mm. But praise God that Jesus' blood broke that chain of captivity and ushered us as God's children into the freedom Adam and Eve originally had Mm. in the garden. So we no longer long for freedom, right? Because we are free, free to live once again in a deep, abiding, intimate relationship with our Creator, free to serve Him, unburdened by guilt and shame, free to produce beautiful, bountiful, abundant fruit for the kingdom of God. So Wendy, while you were talking, It reminds me, talking about freedom takes me to Galatians 5. Mm. And so the word that the Lord has put on my heart for the past few years is to be free. I had a friend speak that to me a couple of years ago. And she just said, Hannah, be free. Mm. Be free of your own expectations. Be free of trying to meet expectations Mm. of others. And so so Galatians 5, it starts out with, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. So it's so fascinating how in Galatians 5, it takes us back to where we were just talking about in week two. And so even if we continue further into uh, Galatians 5, it says, verse 13, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So That's good. really good. And so I'm just so thankful that we get to see and live out this mm-hmm. freedom because of what the Lord Absolutely. did, because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so, friends, we are now moving into a, a favorite segment every single week, 60 Second Theology with Joel, our Director of Theology and Research. And so we're going to go ahead. Joel, you have 60 seconds, and the, your question is, What different scenarios did Joseph find himself in prison? Joseph finds himself in prison in a bunch of different scenarios. So first, he is in the pit. He's actually naked and afraid in the pit. So he's straight up in trouble. Then he finds himself uh, at Potiphar's house. So it's a type of imprisonment, right? Because he's an indentured servant. He's a slave in Potiphar's house. Then he goes uh, into prison 
because you know the whole story with the wife and he runs and he finds himself kind of naked again because she grabs his uh, his cloak he's always naked what is going on with J with joseph he's in prison but then this is going to sound odd but y'all need to follow with me he actually finds himself in the palace and you're thinking joel how is he in prison in the palace because we find out at the very end of joseph's life um he actually doesn't want to be in egypt so in the palace he's in a type of prison because he wants his bones to be buried with his people and so in all of these different instances we find that joseph is in a type of prison but sometimes prisons don't look the way that you think they're supposed to look joel you wow, did it that is impressive yes that was really very is. close cutting it down to the wire <laughs> but you mentioned from prison to the potiphar's house to right. being in a pit um, all the things, all the things, all the, all peas. the things, all the peas. You nailed it, Joel. We are so proud of you. And so, everyone, we can't wait to see what the Lord teaches us through this week and as we continue the 40 days study. Remember, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. We'll yeah. see you next week. Bye. Guys. Bye.